okay, here's the next step. I've put in backward arcs, except for the middle, just because I don't have room. We could if we wanted to. Uh, and I realized there's one kind of uh, crazy one here, so I thought I had better wait and talk you through it. If we look at the arc from D to T, it's a forward arc, and it notice it's saturated. And this is the only one that was saturated after we put through our initial flow. So we're not going to relabel it as a forward arc. We're not even really going to have it as a forward arc. It's saturated. We can't do anything with it. But we do have the backwards arc, which has a capacity of 4, because that's the flow that we can reduce. And when it's backwards, of course, the cost is negative. So let's look at the next step now. I could say, well, look for a negative cost cycle. But let's take a look at what that means so that we motivate it and help us to remember it. We could, looking at the beginning of our network here, we've got two units of product going from S to A at a cost of 9 each, and four going from S to C at a, at a cost of 6 each. So it might make sense to take the two off of S to A and add it to S to C, and we'd save ourselves the difference between 18 and 12. We'd save ourselves $6, or whatever our money unit is. <clears throat> but the problem is we have our flow conservation, so we can't just move stuff between S, A, and C because now we're going to have too few coming into A and too, too many going into C. So what we have to do, kind of like the flow augmenting path, but what we're going to look for instead is a cycle. And it's kind of like, well, I've got those two units that I want to send from S to C, I need to find some route that leads us back to A, whatever that route might be. <clears throat> it might be a very simple route, or it might be a very complex route. It might take every every path in the... Yeah, it's not going to be like that, but you get the idea. <clears throat> so what we do is we look for any cycle that's going to save us money by adding up the arcs that will cost less than what we're doing right now. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here's the one that's used in the solutions. If we go from A to B on this forward arc, that's a cost of 3. And then if we go on this forward arc, there's a cost of 7. But this backward arc a cost of negative 12. That's the, I really should have started there because that's the one we want to take advantage of. That's the highest cost and it's saturated so we'd like to move some stuff not going from D to T so using the backwards arc. And then if we use this backwards arc we're also saving 10 and back up to A and this is the direction of our cycle. And let's figure out what our savings might be for each unit. So we better write this path down. I hope you can't hear whoever it is who's making furniture in the apartment above me. Uh, from A to B, the cost is 3. From B to T, it's 7. From T to D, that's minus 12. <coughs> D to C is minus 10, and then back to C is plus 2. So if this is negative, we found something good. Um, minus 22 and plus 12, so yes, in fact, it's minus 10. <coughs> so what that means is every, every package we route by starting at T and kind of flowing it around this cycle, every unit we can do that with is $10 we save. So we update our flow accordingly, and this diagram is about to get very messy. Now, oh, first we need to figure out how many units we can do that with. Well, let's check our capacities. We had, uh, let's see, we had a 2 here and a 2, oops, wrong arc. 5 here, 3 here, 3 is the lowest so far, 4, 4, 6. So 3 is the number we can send around that loop. So we update our flows accordingly. This is no longer 2. 
That sounds wrong. It was seven three. 